and we will see few more uh, diametodes. Let's see the proof by contradictions and cases. Okay. So you must have seen the following proof structure. Let's first see proof by cases. If I say I have money and I run, if I don't have money then I run, therefore I can conclude that I run. The other way of doing the reasoning is we create a contradiction in the in the in our proof by assuming something which cannot be made true. Okay? And but then we conclude that the assumption was false. Okay? So in this case, I assume I ate a dinosaur and let's suppose my stomach is not big enough that I had stored a dinosaur. Then you have a contradiction, therefore I conclude that I did not eat a dinosaur. Okay? So uh, let's see how would you write down informally proof by cases. If you assume F, we can derive G. If you assume not F, then we can derive G. We can always derive G from sigma. So how do we do that? So first we write what we know uh, from sigma union F in the right G. So and sigma union not F we can derive G. Now what we can do using tautology we can derive F or not F which we have seen and now we can use uh, or elimination to get rid of f and not f on the left hand side and get g and got g derived from c and we can write it as a by cases uh, proof rule. Let's look at the contradiction. Uh, so let's suppose sigma union f proves g, sigma union f also proves not g means assuming f proves contradiction then we can always derive not f okay so let's see how do we do that sigma union f gives you g sigma union f gives you not g now what do we do we uh, flip both of them not g comes forward not f goes later to get sigma union not g proves not f now what do we do we apply contrapy positive to to win. That also we have not f proves not g. So we can obtain not uh, not not g here and then not f there. Now, now what we can do is uh, we can use by cases to derive not f from 3 and 4 and we obtain not f. And this we can call by control. We have seen a forward direction of double negation that uh, we have a formula we can always introduce two negations on front but we can also remove it but that was not in there in our proof rule. Let's now prove it and put that in our proof system. It means is that if you say something kind of like double negation I do not dislike apples actually it means is I like apples and is often said don't do double negation in your English and uh, that's what it was doing try to remove double negation. So formally it says that if you can prove not of not of f then you can derive f. Okay, so how do we do that? So let's suppose you have a premise this not of not of f you can apply monotonicity and just put not f up there okay and then see what you can do uh, you by assumption i can derive not f and not f and not of not of f by uh, intro of conjunction so now we have uh, not f and double not f now we have a contradiction here so therefore once you derive contradiction you can derive anything Therefore, you can say I have derived, derived f. Now, you have a not f proving f. Uh, what you can do is uh, by assumption, uh, you can say that if you had written f here, you could have derived f. Okay? So now you have by cases. If you derive f, not f, you can, if you have not f, then you could have derived f. This f derives f. Therefore, I can say that I can derive f.
and we can turn this into a proof root. I can any time I want I can remove the double negation. Now let's see uh, another rule which will be very very important later on and let's see how can we prove it. It's a generalization of our uh, modus ponens and what it does it say is that uh, not f or g if we have and we have f or h then we can derive g or h. Okay? So what uh, the, the situation is that this is not f and f setting here they go away and you're left with g or h. Okay? Remember that uh, in the case of modus exponents this part was missing. Okay? So now we have this extra generalization in the case of resolution. So let's try to prove this. So we have not f or g here and we want to uh, somehow get to g or h on the right hand side right so let's let's see how we can get there uh, so we assume f here okay and you can still say that i can derive the same thing it's a, it's a monotonicity and from f i can always derive f because of assumption okay we can apply mod exponents and we can obtain g here now, since we have G, we can always extend it to anything and we get G or H. So, by assuming F, I got G or H. Now, the goal is by assuming not F, I want to get G or H and then we'll do by cases. Okay? Sigma also proof F or H, right, to uh, introduce union F and then I got double negation F, right. And uh, you get double negation F or H. Okay. Now we can assume H and then derive H. Now since we have uh, H derives H or not of not of F, what we can do is we can swap it. Okay. So get not of not of F or H or LMs in 6, 8 and 11 and then you get sigma proofs not of not of F or H. Okay. Now, uh, now we can do the trick. Okay. So uh, now we introduce not f here, and then we get uh, okay. We're fine with it. And then if you introduce not f, then you get this not f out. Now you can apply more exponents here, and then you are left with h. Now expand it using g, and do the symmetry. Get g or h. And now you have the thing you want to prove. You can simply you prove by cases uh, applying on 5 and 17. One thing to note here is I had to get this double negation here that I can apply the same proof pattern that was there in the previous case. Okay. So what I needed to uh, do that I had 5 F or H I had and I need to somehow turn this into double negation. Okay. And I know I can introduce double negation anytime I want, right? But that's not allowed to just go and put the double negation somewhere. So you need to really play out the proof uh, which introduces double negation and then you put it back together. Uh, now what we can do is we can introduce a resolution proof rule which says that if you have F or G, not F or H, then you can derive G or H. This is very versatile proof rule and we will realize that some point of time that this is the proof rule you want to do all sorts of reasoning.